Derek Brown, if you missed it right before the break, I consider him the best player on the Carolina Panthers. Uh, he is on injured reserve, and it's the kind of injured reserve that goes all the way through the season. Season-ending injured reserve uh, based on a knee injury suffered in week one. Boo! My goodness, the Carolina Panthers can't catch a break. I'm, I'm not even going to argue that like uh, Derek Brown would have would have fixed anything or solved anything, but he's the one thing you had. He was like your one guarantee. He was your solid, legit star. He was the one who, when like the NFL Top 100 comes out, you could legitimately be upset that Derek Brown wasn't on it. Now, next year, I mean, you, I'm not. You don't, you don't even have to get excited when those. You don't got to click on the link. No, you got to look. You don't even you don't even have to to wonder. He was the one during the preseason, right? ESPN polls all of the uh, executives and scouts anonymously across the league for the top ten at each position. He was the only one that made it, mm-hmm. the only one. And it took him one week, one week, done for the season. And it's just going to accentuate, right? Because. Uh, he was the one piece that everything rotated around. It's just going to accentuate how little stability there is and the, the defensive front for the Carolina Panthers. In other moves that happened today, um, they waived Jamie Sheriff, linebacker. Uh, they signed to the practice squad Deshaun Williams. They... Uh, Deshaun Williams, who started 10 games for the Panthers last year as a defensive lineman, on, played, on, played in 16 as well. On the defensive front, mm-hmm. so uh, comes with awareness of the the uh, team a little bit. They they signed Charles Harris yesterday, who is a, uh edge rusher type as well. I'm, I'm not necessarily advocating for this seriously, but part of me, I mean, you've all seen the movie Invincible, right? Mm-hmm. Start having tryouts. Hey, if you think you can rush the passer <laughs> and you're over 225, right? If if if, if let's if, go on. If, if you if you are 260 and you can run a sub five, uh, like show up to the stadium at four. We we need to we. Uh, you're the Carolina Panthers and you're rotating through defensive ends nonstop. And I'm not saying rotating through like you get a start, you get a start. All right, let's mix it up. Let's try this. Move an inside guy outside. I'm talking about like these guys weren't on the roster a couple weeks ago, and they've already completely run their course. We saw Kayla Von Chason uh, sign a one-year $4 million deal, whatever it was, $5 million deal. Didn't even make it to week one. When that happened, they brought in Jamie Sheriff from uh, from from I think it was Seattle. He's already worn out his welcome. All of these, you get in, you get out, you get in, you get out. It's going to be tough to put anything together with that. And and maybe it's like a, um, I'm trying to think of the, the the best analogy here. You figure you might stumble into one, so you're you're just, you know, it's a volume, uh, it's a volume deal. That's not that's not the best strategy. Pick someone you believe in and, and let them grow grow roots for a little bit here. Trust your evaluation. What does it say about how much you trust your ability to evaluate defensive ends and edge rushers, outside linebackers, that you feel good enough to sign one three weeks ago, whatever good intentions you had or positive things you saw, you're already completely convinced they aren't there anymore and you move on and you bring in the next guy. How How sure of your convictions were you three weeks ago? Thank goodness for Eculiota. Talked about him being a silver lining earlier. Uh, because, you know, this team got one sack against the Saints. One. What did I say in the preseason? I looked at the schedule and I went Derek Carr, Justin Herbert, Gardner Minshew maybe not as much, but then Joe Burrow. Like the first month of your season was filled with players that if you don't pressure the quarterback, they will pick you apart. They're not necessarily outside of, of maybe Joe Burrow and Herbert mm-hmm. when, when he's at his peak. They're not like the scariest quarterbacks in, in the league. They're not Mahomes, Allen, and Jackson, and maybe Stroud. Like They're not the, the best quarterbacks in the league, but 
But you give them all day in the pocket, they'll darn sure look like the best quarterbacks in the league. Oh, yeah. See Derek Carr stats from Sunday. The th- <laughs> See the highlight film from Sunday. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, I talk about this with, with uh, defensive backs. Right. If you're a quarterback and you see a defensive back that was you know on the street on Tuesday and and signed, right? They were just at home hanging out. I say they don't wear a jersey number, they wear a target. Right? They were a bullseye that you're going to attack for the entirety of the game. If you see an edge rusher out there on the field that was was at home on Monday or on someone else's practice squad on Monday and and they're brought in and they're out there on the field, it's it's maybe not a a target because you know you're not going to throw passes on them but there is a bit of oh okay i can take a little bit more time here i'm, I'm gonna give uh you know my first read an extra beat or two to get open because i'm pretty darn confident my 30 million dollar a year <laughs> tackle is going to be able to lock up this uh you know cast off from whatever practice squad they picked him up on or you know he was working out at lifetime fitness 6 days ago so uh so I'm going to take my sweet old time here and see if I can't get a big play if I'm an opposing team all five guys going into routes <laughs> yeah all yes. five guys I just have my front five my, my five offensive linemen to protect I don't need to hold a tight end or a running back I don't need chips I don't need any of that stuff right now and and I'm aware of where Jadeveon Clowney is. That's the only thing I worry about. Where's he? Oh, he's to the right. Everyone slide that way. And and you're good. Done. You don't even have to worry about Derek Brown anymore. You can just draw plays in the dirt before going out there in the huddle. <laughs> Let's just call it what it is. Hey, you want to run a post? All right, you can run a post. Hey, how about you run a cross underneath? I'm going to run a quick out here in the flat. How about you settle in the middle and you just go long? Done. That is uh. It's a really fun way to play quarterback. But even if it's like, did you just call a triple move? I did. Do you want me to do the out, up, and out again? Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, I'll have the time. Don't worry, you're good. Don't worry, you got it. It's it's. I would have rather they stuck to their convictions. Unless it's a salary cap move. The Caleb Von Chason thing, I think, was about cutting salary as much as it there was, was cutting the player. There was some of that into it. Um, but I would much rather, like, if you liked Jamie Sheriff last week, part of me is like, see it out for a month. Switching it out for somebody else, they're gonna have to. And I know the, you know, as you mentioned, Deshaun Williams already played in the system, but it's still it's hectic the week you're moving around like that. It's hard to just be, you know, landing gear down, flight on the ground. All right, you're in the game. It's not easy. A little bit of stability goes a long way for players. The drive with Tim Donnelly, ninety nine nine, the fan. This all sucks, by the way. <laughs> it's it's brutal.